so hello, we're, we're going to basically go through just a few things about the PSF in case you don't know, and then we're going to open it up to questions. So that will give you a few minutes to think of a good question. So, so you know, there will be a quiz later on. Uh, so, so we'll do that. Um, and we're going to be kind of dancing back and forth as we trade off on slides. So we'll see just how entertaining that is. But uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Eric to, to get us started here. Great. Yeah, and thank you all for coming. Um, so we're just going to start off, yeah, we're going to talk a little bit about the PSF, uh, and then instead of just standing up here the whole time telling you, hopefully you have some questions that will kind of direct what else we can tell you about the PSF. So please, again, yeah, just think of if you have any questions or, you know, how does that whole Python thing exist in the world? Uh, we're happy to answer them. But really, the thing that the PSF does is fulfill the PSF's mission, which is to promote Python. Um, and so that is kind of advancing the development as well as the community and the ecosystem. So you think about the conferences around the world, all the open source code on PyPI, as well as the core language. Uh, we exist as a nonprofit to just help all of those things get better and to make Python better for all of us as users. Yeah, and I think uh, the thing I would add there is just that we ultimately are always driven at the PSF by coming back to this. So there may be things that are good. There may be lots of things that are wonderful. If we as the PSF can't find them fitting in that sort of framework, then we probably can't really support it because we're a nonprofit in the United States and they're pretty picky about those things. So uh, that's where we're at. So specifically, what do we do? Um, we'll talk about this more as it comes up, but the PSF does not tell the core developers what to do with the Python language. Uh, they would be very unhappy with us if we tried to do that. Uh, instead, we own the intellectual property uh, because even though it's an open source project, somebody needs to own all of that code, the intellectual property, in order to even release it as an open source project. If it were just floating around with no license, anybody in the world could do whatever they wanted with it, and that's not exactly what we would like to have happen with the Python language. Um, we also, uh, you know, sort of try to support our members and, and, and continue to grow things as, as an inclusive organization. And then a large part of what the PSF does has to do with um, money. So um, the PSF makes a fair profit on PyCon US, which we put on. And most of that money goes back to either running the PSF or a large part of it to supporting other Python events around the world. So uh, we will be granting in the order of a quarter million dollars to various organizations this year. So, Including the conference you're sitting at right now. So we actually gave EuroPython a grant uh, to help you know, build the Python community here in Europe. So yeah, most PyCons around the world are helped out by the PSF. I personally ran uh, Pi Cascades for the first year, and the grant we got from the PSF is really what let us put down a down payment on our venue. So we were a new first year conference, and we had no money, we had no resources, and it was really that PSF money that let us kind of start the process of, of creating a PyCon. Uh, so it was super important for us to be able to build that community uh, that we were trying to build in the Pacific Northwest. So that's just one example. We're doing that for communities all around the world. So the way the PSF works is anyone who contributes about five hours a month is able to become a member. And the membership, who is you know, probably anyone in this room could become a member, votes for the board of directors. So we are both on that board of directors. And we are the people that are responsible for guiding the Python Software Foundation. So we are kind of legally responsible for the PSF. And the really cool thing is that we are democratically elected. There is an election each year for the board by members of the community. So it is really a community-run organization that is in control of the language and all of the decisions around kind of the legal entity that runs Python. So that's very unique in the world, right? A lot of the other languages out there are run by corporations. Um, really, Python itself is run by the community. So that's a pretty cool and special thing. Uh, and this is actually, we just had a board election a couple months ago, and this is the the full list of people who are on the board this year. I'm not going to read all the names, but uh, it's also on our website if you're curious uh, to look more into the folks that are on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, 
just in case you, you may not uh, remember, but, um, oops, I want too soon. I, we switched starting last year to three-year terms. So um, everybody is elected now to a three-year term. So we had four new board members elected uh, this past June. Uh, and this gives us a little bit more continuity so that we um, basically, to become an effective board member, it takes a few months. When we were having yearly elections, that meant that it's quite possible by the time you learned what you were doing, you were not elected anymore. So we wanted a little bit more stability. So that's what was involved with that. There. Um, and uh, we also have a number of people that are on staff. So as the PSF has grown, we actually do have people whose job it is to do the day-to-day -day operations of the PSF, which is perhaps more work than you would think uh, at, at first glance. These people are incredibly busy. So we have Eva Yodlowska, who's been our director of operations for several years. She makes sure that everything happens. And trust me, the woman is incredible. She does make sure that everything happens. Um, we also have Betsy Walashevsky, who is in charge of uh, event coordination and sponsorship. So in particular, if you know you have a company that wants to help support the PSF or whatever, uh, we would put you in touch with Betsy to help work out the details there. Uh, we're very happy that we just hired, starting in June, Ernest Durbin to be a director of infrastructure. So that means not only will the like PyPI hiccups uh, get fixed faster. Uh, if you've been watching infrastructure now, Ernest usually knows what's going wrong almost before it happens, and and issues are fixed usually within an hour or two. It's a, we, very good. But he's also going to help us do things like bring our membership lists all together and make it less of a tangle to figure out how to do this and that and the other thing uh, on uh, you know python.org, stuff like that. Uh, we also have Phyllis Dobbs, who's an accountant and is going to be moving into the treasurer role as uh, Kurt Kaiser, our current treasurer, sort of transitions out uh, into retirement. So those are the key people that we have now. Um, there will be an I hope, but I'm not in a position to say officially yet, I hope there will be an announcement about another person joining our staff in the next couple of months that will help us uh, sort of keep all of these balls in the air. Yep. And so this is what I touched on a little bit more. There are a few different levels of membership. Uh, the main ones that you need to care about are these two bottom ones, the managing or contributing member. They're basically just people who do work, like I said, in the Python community, whether it's working on the PSF, working on a meetup group, working on open source Python code. As long as you work on five hours a month of uh, something in the Python community, you're able to kind of become a voting member of the PSF. Uh, the other way you can become a member is to give us money. So we are also happy to have you know, more money from our kind of individual members. So the supporting membership, I believe it's $100 a year? Yeah, 99. Uh, 99 a year. Uh, and so you can also give money to become a member. Um, there's a few other ones there, but those are the kind of important ones that I think most people need to know about to, to kind of become a member. Uh, yeah, and um, should I say, I think to put this into perspective a little bit, um, if you are contributing time that contributes to the community, this is a self-certification process. So if you're doing it and you tell us, we trust you, we don't call, we don't check, whatever, we're, we're not built to work that way. So that, that's something that you just self-certify, and then you're in. Uh, the supporting membership, uh, $99 a year. Uh, to put that into perspective, if we can get 10 supporting members, that means we can probably do a Django Girls in Africa or something like that. So in, in fact, that sort of membership does have a very direct impact, and we actually need more of that kind of membership so that we sort of have our, our sources of income spread out a little bit and we're not so reliant on did PyCon have a good year. If for some horrible reason PyCon has a bad year, we can't do any of our grants, that would be horrible. So we're trying to encourage other things to go on. Uh, I did put in a few places where you can contact the PSF. The generic address to contact the PSF is psf at python.org. Uh, pretty easy to remember. That goes to the board and the staff. Everybody sees that. And 
Again, it's kind of busy, so you may not get an instant response, but you will get a response, and, and the, the people who need to see it will probably be there. If there's something you want to do, know about specifically, uh, Eva is our director of operations, so that's all of the making sure stuff happens. Uh, Betsy, as I mentioned, does sponsorship, so if you want to put people in your company in charge so that they can do a corporate sponsorship, she's the one that would work out the details there. And of course, if you want to get to me, my address is there as well, and I will do whatever I can to get your uh, request to the right place. And you don't need to contact me, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't let me put his address there. So. No, uh, I'm easy to find on the internet as well, but uh, I have no formal power, so it wouldn't be very useful to talk to me. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that is uh, all the, the formalities that we wanted to, to talk about. Obviously, the PSF does a, a whole lot more. Uh, there's a lot of specific operations that we do. Uh, and so if there's any questions, comments, interesting things, ideas uh, that you all have for what the PSF could be doing, if you have questions about who does something in the Python community, anything like that, uh, we're happy to kind of talk a little bit more about details, in-depth stuff. So this is the part where you now ask questions. Okay. <laughs> is there any question? Yeah, please stand up and come here. Um, <laughs> um, what does the board do exactly and how often do you meet? So, somebody always <laughs> asks that. Uh, the, the meeting part is easy. We have an hour long meeting every month. Uh, since we have people around the world, uh, this is done both by uh, Slack or IRC so that we have a text channel and by phone so that we also have a voice channel. Um, what do we do? Um, we mainly are concerned with making sure that things go the right way. So we're worried about if we have special grant requests, the board would have to then meet and discuss to see, does this grant request fall within our mission? So a large part of it is actually meant to be uh, making sure that uh, basically oversight of what's going on for, for um, other things that we have going on. So are the working groups doing what they're supposed to do? Uh, as we have been hiring these people, of course the board has been involved in, do we have enough money? How are we going to follow through? What's the process for hiring? Where are we in that process? So there are a lot of those kind of management and oversight things that we do. The one thing that we are trying to do more of is then discussing uh, strategy. And we had a discussion about strategy uh, just a few minutes ago before we came up here uh, in terms of what should the board's strategy be. And then finally, the big thing is resources. That is, how are we going to fund all of this? Uh, so thinking about ways that we can do sponsorship, actually having board members involved in, you know, making at least initial contact with sponsors. So I don't know, anything else? Yeah, and I think the day-to-day the -day is really email. So there's a lot of, you know, we have this one monthly board meeting, but oftentimes that's very much a formality. We have some conversations, we vote on things. You know, at least half of it is a lot of kind of required legal, you know, I <laughs> kind of formalities. But I think the, a lot of the work is done over email. So we have conversations kind of before the votes, which is where we kind of hash out a lot of the conversation. So I'd say, you know, there's two or three active email threads each day that are happening on the board list that have a decent amount of kind of conversation going on. Uh, and that feels like the bulk of the work is kind of coming to a consensus as a board on specific direction within the PSF. Um, yeah, and then hopefully more and more we're gonna be doing more kind of budget setting, priority setting, a little bit of vision for the community. Um, but as we've kind of talked about, it's, it's really difficult to, to do that. You know, all the different board members have different priorities and Python is a big, crazy global community that is very multifaceted and it's really hard to kind of wrap our heads around, you know, everything that's going on. And um, so yeah, it's really just trying to kind of steer the ship a little bit. And, but the day to day is just kind of having input on the direction of how we're spending money and, and kind of ways that we want to have the community kind of work. So I don't know if that answered the question explicitly, but I think, did, did you have a question? Hello. Uh, first of all, thank you for all the well done job and uh, the, um, this conference. It was great. 
Um, in what my question is, um, I'm running uh, meetup um, uh, groups in uh, two cities in uh, Romania, in Iași and Bucharest, and uh, I want to know what is the support that uh, what is the support that I can receive from PSF uh, community to expand my 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 group to make more. Uh, presentations to add new members and uh, and so on. Okay, um, so first of all, I mean, I th I think it, it's this. It may, this may sound silly, but it, it does matter. Is that if you want things like PSF stickers, just ask. <laughs> we can send those to you. Why? Why not? Uh, so um, the other thing, though, is if you're using Meetup, Meetup.com. To, to get the word out, we will pay your meetup fees. Uh, we do ask you to, I, I, we're, we're working on, on tightening that policy a little bit. We want to be sure we get the receipts and pay for it in a timely manner. So it's not like, oh yeah, two years ago we used meetup, please, get, no, it has to be pretty current. But uh, that's something that we will do for you. Uh, if you want to have, like, say, a day-long training and you need some support for the vital parts of that, then uh, you can, of course, apply for a grant as well. Um, so, so those are things that, that we can do. Um, we don't tend to support paying for a venue for a weekly meetup or something like that because that we couldn't afford to do that for the world. Um, but if there's something special, we tend to, we have a grants working group that decides these things and they are becoming more careful so that people say, yes, give us money for swag. And we say, no, we'd much rather give you money so that you could actually have the training, uh, food, um, maybe you need to have an internet connection, things like that. So if you do that, there is a, a process. You can go on and fill out a form and they get back to you and ask questions and whatever. All of that we, we will do, it just needs to have a certain amount of lead time. They need six weeks so that they can ask those questions and get you the money. Uh, it's again not good to say yes. I have a, I have a meetup or I have a, a workshop uh, next Tuesday. Uh, can you please give us X? It won't work. Won't work. So, but those things we will do. And if there's something else um, like you need, maybe would like your event tweeted from the PSF account or things like that, then you can ask us. I mean, that would be the address for Betsy that I showed you there. It is um, she would be a person that could do that so that we can support that way. I don't know. If you have anything else? No. Yeah, like the PSF is very much, we, we have money <laughs> and we can spend money on things that are useful. Um, but yeah, we don't have a lot of contact in local communities and that kind of stuff. It's harder for us to, you know, we, we're a global organization, so we don't have those local contacts, but we can definitely help you do things that will promote your own meetup if there, if money is a, an issue. <laughs> Uh, I, I believe that um, there, there are some things, so you might check out even um, the Django Girls has a, 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 a handbook and they've got some good funding tips that would apply not just to Django Girls but generally funding and publicity. Um, Pi Ladies used to have, uh, they have a import Pi Ladies, there's a, a, a GitHub repo and they have a lot of materials on organization and doing things like that. And I think that board, uh, Lorena Mesa, who's a board member and Mario Corchero, I think they're talking about working on an organizer's guide from, you know, particularly like doing a more of a, a conference, but then there's also been some talk about just local organizers guides too. So um, I don't have a specific thing to point to there, but we, we, could, we could certainly put you in touch with people if you want. Mm -hmm. And I know, I think earlier this week, there was also like a meetup organizers open space here. And I know at PyCon as well in the US, there's usually one just where the other meetup organizers get together and kind of share ideas for formats and you know, cooperation, like if there's a, another, you know, like a UX or a API meetup or something, you can kind of do cross collaborations with them to get both of your memberships to show up. And so I do think there's some other strategies on, yeah, kind of tactics for, for meetups to get a little bit more uh, publicity and knowledge. But uh, I don't think we have like a formal space for that. A lot of the conferences have those kind of spaces. Um, 
but I don't have like a mailing list or something to send you to, but there might, I would not be surprised if there was like a Python meetup mailing list somewhere where you could also do that digitally. There's a Python organizers. Sure. And there is actually, there is a Slack channel so the, with Python organizers, so I'm, I think maybe you need to be sent an invite. If, if you see me today, I, I think I can get you set up with that. Any other questions? <laughs> Do you handle press relationship? If not, who does? Like with like press? Like Journalists doing like uh, PR yeah, kind of stuff. Yeah, PR kind of stuff. We have, we have a blog. <laughs> yes, uh, it's it's very ad hoc. So we don't have a uh, other than uh, the person from um, is it Hacker News that covers the kernel, uh, the uh, language summits. Oh, the LWM. Yes, Liz, yeah, that's it. That's that. That's it. Yes, I. Uh, we we do have that. Um, not that we really need that on, but uh, otherwise we don't have an official thing with the press, but we are contacted from time to time by the press. So I know that I've occasionally given interviews and other board members have, have given interviews uh, that way. So if you, if you know of somebody who wants to contact the PSF from that angle, like we are X magazine and we want to have official commentary on Python or whatever, then you would just contact the PSF generally and we would find a board member who would be willing to do that. So I, I'm not sure if that's where your question was going, but that's... Is there a recent history shows that John has worked as Guido has resigned? I, mm -hmm. I was wondering uh, how much maybe press or PR pressure did it put into you? Uh, mercifully little. Um, you know, we don't, and we debated whether or not we were even going to put this in as a slide. We don't control the core developers, so we're not really controlling that process. So we haven't, we haven't actually, we don't have a lot to say on that other than, yeah, we think they'll figure it out. Just, just hang with them. And, and I do think that kind of tangentially that also touches on the fact that you know most of the the board members and most of the people involved with the PSF are developers given the the background um, so if there are people that have those kind of auxiliary skills that nonprofits need like PR marketing sales sponsorship uh, there are working groups that we have we have like a marketing working group and other places where you can come in and really you don't need to be like a board member to come in and really help the PSF especially if you have those like like we have lots of Python programmers like we're good <laughs> with Python programming, but all the other skills that you need to run a, a successful nonprofit are definitely much more lacking in our membership, just given that we are the PSF. Um, and so, right, if you do have kind of a background in marketing, PR, that kind of stuff, that is somewhere where you can have a huge impact uh, by volunteering, uh, because that is a skill set that we, we don't have a lot of. Um, so that's another place uh, you can definitely join our marketing working group, that kind of stuff, where you can really have have an impact with those skill sets um, that is outsized within the organization. So that's definitely another mm -hmm. another thing to note. <laughs> cool. Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> is Guido still the president of the PSF? Guido is the president of the PSF. Um, by by, he got to design his role there, so he does not have let's say, a heavy schedule uh, in terms of being president of the PSF. But that, that has not changed. He has not stepped away from that. We did ask, by the way, uh, <laughs> so we know. Um, so in terms of uh, like membership globally, you've got your, your different kind of sets of membership. Um, is, could you give like a picture of how dispersed all of the different kind of layers are, like if you've got like a basic member, are they kind of dispersed all over the globe and then it kind of ends up the board members are all Americans or is it kind of like? Um, we have been working hard to get that more diverse. Um, our board is, we have two people who are Australian, we have two people who are European uh, out of the, uh, and we have one person who is African, and that's out of um, 
11 at-large members. So, and we did have somebody from South America. It's something that we continue to need to work on. Um, but, you know, in terms of the overall membership, I don't have that um, at my fingertips. We have about 1,000 voting members, I can tell you that. And I, I think you're right that the, they skew heavily towards um, sort of northern western Europe and the U.S. because that's where the core developers and most of the development has, has been historically. But we're trying to move that so I know that Brazil, for example, we, we have a number of uh, members from Brazil because they have a very active Python community. So, yeah, we're, we're working on it. I, I was talking to Noah about this just the other day. They're number three. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't know much about that. <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed. It's, it's, it, it is. It's, it's very striking, but in fact, we have very little official contact with them. So we're working to change that. Yeah. And just another kind of another data point wearing my, my Read the Docs hat it is the second largest market for read the docs. I know it was, I think, PyPI um, were the stats. The keynote the other day for PyPI, it was China's number two there. So yeah, these large kind of core infrastructure projects, we, yeah, the, the whole world is using Python and China's huge, Japan, a lot of these places where we have a lot less membership, a lot less contact, a lot less marketing of the PSF. Um, and so that's definitely one of the, the questions that we have is, is how do we get more more contact, how do we get more people there that, that care and want to have kind of a voice in what we're doing. So it, it's definitely kind of, yeah. as Naomi said, something we're thinking a lot about. So. Cool. Well, this maybe this is the end of our kind of formal Q&A, but we're right. both here, I know, at least for the rest of the day. The rest and of the day. I'm here at least in the morning for the sprints tomorrow. So if you see us around or just after the talk and want to ask questions that aren't in front of a microphone, definitely feel free to come up and chat with us as well. So. Okay, yes. Yes, so thank you very much.